All right, this is an extra video. We have some extra time left over after lecture 20. So I'm going to talk about some of these leftover topics that I didn't really find a good place for anywhere in the course. And the first one is big data sets and these two things in scikit-learn called uh, SGD classifier and SGD regressor that I think are useful to know about. And yeah, so um, we haven't really talked too much about huge data sets in the course and huge data sets are complicated. Uh, one, because the code can just be too slow. So if your hyperparameter optimization is going to take a thousand hours, you're not going to want to wait that long. Um, and another is that is, so this is kind of a time complexity issue, a time issue and a, and a space issue. Um, the data just doesn't fit. I can't even load in the data. And so um, turns out there are ways to address both, both of these problems. And, um, and there's something called SGD, stochastic gradient descent. I know you're tired of me saying this, but we go into detail about this in 340. It's one of the core topics. Um, but I just want to kind of tell you about it in the scikit-learn ecosystem, because I think it's good for you to know. I should also say, if you're having these big, big problems with big data sets, I mean, one, the kind of most crude thing you could do is just subset your data, which is something I posted on Piazza. Like, maybe you have a million or even many millions of rows, but maybe you don't need all that amount of data to pick the optimal hyperparameters. Maybe a subset of 10% or 1% randomly chosen from your data set would be enough, not to give you a good model, because to get a good model, you want to use as much data as you can, but to tune the hyperparameters, yeah, maybe you can find good enough hyperparameters only looking at a smaller amount of the data. And then you, because the, the hyperparameter search is often the slowest thing. And so maybe you do your hyperparameter search on 1% of the data, that speeds it up a lot. You pick your hyperparameters based on that, and then you train the entire model on the entire giant full training set, but you only have to do that once. Um, so that's kind of okay, whereas hyperparameter tuning is training over and over again. So that's another useful strategy um, that I think is worth mentioning. So uh, simplest strategy subset your data. Okay. Okay, um, but I'm going to talk about this SGD thing as well. Um, there's a question in the chat. Uh, is SGD similar to conjugate gradient or steepest descent methods? Um, it is related, um, but it is kind of a variant of steepest descent that doesn't look at the whole data set every time, every iteration. It looks at a subset of the data to go faster. Could you promise to write much more on this in EPS 330? You know, next term I'll be teaching 340 for the first time after I created this course. And you know what? I am going to say that all the time. I know I will, because I'm going to feel like all those people in there need to know all this good stuff that we've been doing together for the last few months. So I bet you I will be constantly saying, and, and, and you should really take 330 to learn more about this. Um, OK. So SGD um, classifier and regressor are in scikit-learn like this, and they're in the linear model kind of module. Um, and so they're kind of like ridge and logistic regression. There, there isn't exactly like an SGD random forest in scikit-learn, um, but for, for ridge and logistic regression at least, which are pretty common, um, you can kind of think of this as like a drop in replacement that should be faster. So SGD regressor is basically the same thing as ridge, but it should be faster. SGD classifier loss equals log is basically the same thing as logistic regression, except it should be faster. You may have remembered, I just very briefly mentioned this Huber regressor in the outliers lecture, those more robust outliers. So there's also an equivalent of that. And there's some other stuff in here as well, but that's good enough for our purposes. And so for like normal size data sets, stick with the originals because these have their own problems. But if it's just taking too long, um, these are really useful. So I have this data set of uh, sentiment analysis for tweets. And 
yeah, I don't think we've looked at this data set before and I'm just picking it specifically because it's a giant data set. Um, and I guess I've already run the code and I'll just leave it because it'll be slow, but um, there's some data set, there's some, some tweets and um, some positive or negative, kind of like the movie review thing, very similar idea, but more a bigger data set, uh, which is which I need to illustrate my point. So we have um, a million rows here, which is I think more than we've dealt with in this course. And if we run count vectorizer, because again, it's text data, um, we're going to get some very serious amounts of data. So a million by a million, roughly um, array. If you recall, we talked about sparse matrices. So this thing is started as a sparse matrix. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't actually fit on my computer to be a million by a million, because that would be like 10 to the 12 um, numbers. But it's a sparse matrix, so it fits. Here, I'm just saying only one in 100,000 of the elements is non-zero. So that's why it fits. And of course, and then I open my window, and then it gets loud. Anyways, this is a bonus time, so let's not worry about that. OK, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run some experiments where I time things. Ugh, I got to close the window. That's way too loud. Just can't win. OK, so I'm going to I'm going to make a logistic regression, which you've seen many times. I'm going to time it. I won't bother running this again now, but you can see that it took um, took 30 seconds and gave me some warnings about convergence. That's fine. So it took 30 seconds and I got a training score of 82% accuracy and a test score of 77% um, accuracy. And look, I've, I now feel so lost. If I don't do this first, I'm like, what is even happening here? Uh, okay. Oh, so this is actually a balanced data set, 50-50, positive and negative. Okay. So I got 80%, uh, 81% training accuracy. And the nuisance here is that it took 30 seconds. And also, I don't know if you noticed, but we've mostly been setting max iter equals 1,000 in this course to avoid this warning. Um, but now we're specifically going to talk about this issue because that's that will make it slow. It takes longer to do its logistic regression fitting. So even 30 seconds, maybe longer. Do I really want to deal with that with my hyperparameter tuning? Um, I want to try lots of different things. I want to do cross-validation and so on and so forth. And I, when I first made this demo, it, funnily enough, it was even sclower. But um, somewhere in scikit-learn or probably in scipy, someone improved something in the last year or so, I believe. And so this wasn't as slow as it used to be, but that's fine. OK, so logistic regression is actually, when you call fit in logistic regression, there's some step of fit that it's doing over and over again. And those are called the iterations. And that's why there's this max iter hyperparameter. Um, and so if I set this to a bigger number, it's going to take longer. And so I don't want to wait for us to finish that. But you can see that it, it you can ask it how many iterations did you do. It said it did 100. And, and we got these scores. And it took 25 seconds. So now I'm going to. Long story short, I'm going to show you SGD classifier on the exact same problem. And it's way faster. It takes three seconds. So it's around eight times faster or something. Um, and so that's really good because if I'm doing some big pipeline with a bunch of stuff, I, I can do eight times more experiments. Um, and so eight times faster sounds, sounds pretty appealing. So how are the scores? 82 and 77. Um, and the scores here are 77 and 77. So this is a very interesting phenomenon that kind of, um, that even 340 doesn't fully get to in detail, I would say. Um, and there's also like active research going on in this area. But let me explain what's happening here. This SGD classifier, the way it's faster is kind of, it, it kind of does a worse job of fit, in a sense. Um, it, it's kind of lazy, and it can save a bit of time. There are, if you made it run 
longer, maybe it would do better. But um, it's doing worse in terms of training score, meaning that during fitting, it didn't quite do as good a job as logistic regression. But in terms of the test score, and you would see the same on cross-validation, they're not that different. Um, I should also think about the hyperparameters. Sorry. I want to investigate this a bit more uh, because logistic regression has that C hyperparameter and uh, SGD classifier has one as well. And I want to think if that's what's causing this as well. But okay, long story short, um, instead of waiting 25 seconds, you wait three seconds and you get almost the same test accuracy, which is what you care about. So let me skip over this junk for a second and let me just go down to this plot that I made uh, this morning, which I think was very interesting. Um, so what I did is I, I messed around with the hyperparameters of these methods um, that determine how long it takes. So I mentioned logistic regression has a max iter hyperparameter. And um, so you can reduce that. Like if you say, hey, logistic regression is too slow, I can set max iter to a lower value, it will run faster. Uh, and I can set it to a higher value, it will run slower. And likewise, SGD classifier has that. And so what I did is I ran those experiments and I plotted on the x-axis the literal amount of time it took. Um, and on the y-axis, I have the train and the test score. So you can see logistic regression train. It just keeps getting better and better as I give it more time. As I change that max iter hyperparameter, it's fitting better and better and getting a better train score but it's not actually um, doing better on test. It kind of saturates and, and all of what it's doing here is just overfitting. This SGD classifier thing is, is and I was kind of surprised by these results, um, but when I messed around with the hyperparameters to make it take longer, it didn't have a very noticeable effect on the accuracy. And so what this is saying, long story short, is that if you want to wait a very short amount of time, like two seconds, um, the SGD is going to be way better than logistic regression. You can tell the logistic regression, hey, I only want you to spend two seconds on this, but it's going to do a horrible job. So the SGD thing is kind of doing a pretty good job. Um, I'm still surprised that it's like so independent of how long you spend. That seems a little fishy to me. But basically, if you're only willing to wait one second, it's going to do a way better job than logistic regression. If you actually were willing to wait out a super long time, then you might as well use the original logistic regression. It seems like it, on this data set, at least, it does a little bit better than this whole messy SGD thing. So, um, I don't want to wait that long. SGD classifier will probably do better on a big data set. If you can wait forever, well, yeah, let, let, me, leave, let me leave it at that. Um, okay, so I just want to look in the chat. Um, isn't the time kind of dependent on your computer spec? Um, it is. So there's other ways to speed things up. You can subset the data, you can get a fancier computer, you can do this on Amazon Web Services and get tons of computers or super fancy computers. But if it's only a matter of switching one line of code from logistic regression to SGD classifier or from Ridge to SGD regressor, and it goes 10 times faster with almost the same score. And by the way, they still have the same um, like coefficients and stuff. So, uh, yeah, still has the same coefficients and everything. So it really is the same thing. You can still look at the coefficients like you could before. Um, this could just be like a one line change of your code that could get you a big speed up on a big data set. Um, how to calculate the score? Why is score around 0.7? So this is a binary classification problem of a positive or negative sentiment on the tweets so that the score in this case is the accuracy. So 0.7 means uh, it's getting it right 70% of the time. 
What is considered a big data set? Great question. I would consider a big data set one where its size is significantly inconveniencing you. Like, gosh, this is really taking too long, or this does not fit on the memory of my computer. I need to go um, into the cloud and get myself something with massive amounts of memory. I guess that's my definition of a big data set. Um, because it, it really depends from person to person. Like, um, I mean, for, for on the scale of things Google are doing, they probably have a different definition of big data set than I do. How trustworthy is SGD? Is it just a quick and dirty way? Yeah, I don't want to upset um, my colleagues who, who work on this and do research on this. And you can show that it is trustworthy. You, you can do it right but I don't know exactly how it's being done inside of scikit-learn. Um, so given that I don't know the details of how it was implemented and how much care was put into it and all of that, I would say if you don't need the speed, just use the original thing. Um, and if you need the speed, like if you feel like you don't really have another choice, then even if it's gonna be a little bit worse, what can you do? I know that's a very vague answer, but um, I think it's I think it's fine. That's my short answer. I don't think it's going to give you totally um, totally garbage results. Okay, now we're actually out of time, so that ends um, the little bonus feature about big data sets, and you can think about using these functions if your code is running too slow. That's all for today, and see you on Tuesday.